welcome to our spotlight on how to support children's behaviour at home and at school. Over the course of this presentation, I'll be sharing with you some of the strategies that we use in school to support children's behaviour and sharing with you some tips and strategies of uh, things that you can do to support your child's behaviour at home. Firstly, I would like to introduce you to our three golden rules. These are be ready, be respectful and be safe. These three rules underpin all of the work that we do in school around behaviour and they drive the conversations that we have with children about their behaviour. In school, we adopt a relational approach. This is an emotionally safe way to support behaviour and development rather than a system to manage it. We also view behaviour as communication. We, we view their behaviour as them trying to tell us something. There are four elements to this approach, protect, relate, regulate and reflect. OK, so a little bit more about our first element, protect. This is all about building relationships and we feel that this is the key to enabling children to feel safe whilst in school. It is the foundation that everything else depends on. Without this, we're not going to get the children to learn. We ensure that all children have access to an emotionally available adult uh, and school staff will adjust their expectations around, the, around all learners to correspond with their developmental capabilities, so what year group they're in, and their experiences of traumatic stress. We use our lunch lunchtime hubs for those children who can at times find playtimes challenging and overwhelming and giving them a, a safe space to go to if they can feel themselves becoming a little bit overwhelmed. We also adopt a pace approach when interacting with children. Pace is a way of thinking, feeling and behaving that makes our young people feel safe to engage because we are engaged with them. It's about building trust and relationships, emotional connections, which lead then to a sense of security. PACE stands for playfulness, acceptance, curiosity and empathy. So playfulness is a playful, warm and spontaneous way of, of interacting with the children to support them to feel safe and to promote trust. When we connect with, with children in this way, they are, they're freer to open up. They will reflect, laugh, play and they share their true feelings with us. Acceptance is about at all times accepting the child's thoughts and feelings without any judgment or criticism. And as a result, the, ch the children will build trust with us that we will not shame them or be critical of them. Curiosity is about having an active interest, which is non-judgmental as to how children will experience an emotional event. We will use questions like, will you help me to understand? Or I wonder if. By, by showing curiosity, it's letting the, ch the, the child know that we really want to understand their meaning of their understanding of what's happened. And they're, again, to build trust. And finally, empathy. This is about feeling into the emotional pain of the child, not just experiencing it cognitively, but putting ourselves in their shoes. When we were their age, how would we have reacted? Really understanding and showing that we have compassion for what they're feeling. OK, so the next element relates. By relating with our children, we can show that we are listening and seeing their feelings and supporting and recognising the emotions they are experiencing. So there are some key relational needs. One of those is affect attunement. So affect attunement is uh, having the ability to meet the child's emotional intensity on an energetic level so that we can show that we are connecting with them in that in that emotion. So if they're feeling cross and they're angry, what we're not going to do is we're not going to mirror that back to them but what we're going to mirror is the intensity of that emotion so we might use a, a stronger voice we might be a little bit more firm oh my goodness i can see you're really cross and i would be cross too if i were you so we're not matching the anger but we're showing them that we understand what how they're feeling okay so also empathy and active listening so active listening requires um the listener to really focus to imagine in and hold in mind what the child is saying about that particular emotion, about how they're feeling. We're not trying to persuade the children out of their feelings. This is purely about just affirming and recognising how they are feeling and letting them know it's OK for them to feel that way. OK, and then we've got containment, which is uh, being able to stay with the child, to bear their emotion with them. And being able to do this, we're validating their feelings. 
What we're not trying to do here is jump into action, distract them from anything or try to make it better. It's literally just about being with them and bearing the pain with them. And then we move on to our third element, which is regulate. So at school, we're actively seeking ways to allow children to calm their bodies and minds. We see our role as co-regulators. So for in order for the children to be able to self-regulate, we need to give them the skills in order to do that. So one of the regulation strategies that we use in school to help children to regulate is affect labelling. Affect labelling is quite simply finding words for feelings, especially for some of our younger children who might be feeling a particular emotion but don't understand or don't know the word to describe it. So affect labelling is, is, is quite simply the process of naming um, and labelling those emotions. And evidence shows that by being able to do that, it has regulating effects on our emotions. Another regulation strategy that we adopt is, is making sure, ensuring that the children feel understood. This goes back to the empathic listening, listening and understanding how the children are feeling, really feeling those feelings with the children. It's interesting to note as well that some evidence suggests that only children who have been empathised with can empathise with others. It's believed that empathy is, a, is learned from a young age when it's modelled by parents and other adults. And now we're going to move on to the final element of our uh, relational approach, which is reflect. By reflecting, we're encouraging our children to make sense of their feelings. If children can't reflect on their feelings, then they're more likely to behave them. So conversations to support emotional and mental health are key. We provide our children time to reflect after something's happened, to discuss alternatives to their behaviour, but we still acknowledge the emotions that they were feeling at the time. When smaller incidents occur, we use emotion coaching techniques to structure conversations with the children. And you can see an example of the script that we use in the top right hand corner of the screen. There are four stages to this script. Firstly, we want to rec recognise and empathise. So we want to aim to understand how the child is feeling. Then we want to validate and label. Oh, I can see that you're feeling frustrated and it's OK to feel frustrated. And then we want to set limits. I understand that you are feeling frustrated, but one of our golden rules is to be safe, so hurting others isn't an okay thing to do. And then finally, we want to problem solve with the child. So we'll ask them the question, wonder what we could do next time. And then we'll have a discussion about how, if the same incident was to occur again, we could, we could approach it differently. When a child's actions require greater levels of reflection, we will engage with them in a restorative conversation. These don't tend to take place immediately after the incident. We will wait until things have calmed down a little bit until they're in the until the child is in the right frame of mind to reflect on what happened. There's a number of questions that we'll, we will use to, to drive the conversation with the children. What happened? What were you thinking and feeling at the time? Who was affected and how were they affected? What do you need so that things can be better? And what needs to happen to move things forward and put things right? By asking these questions, we're getting the child to really reflect on the incident, how it impacted on them and how it impacted on others, but then also giving them the opportunities to reflect on what they need personally and how they can respond to a, a similar incident in the future. I wanted to share this next slide with you because I think that the image is really powerful. It's important to remember that the way your child behaves is a communication of how they're feeling. When your child acts out, it can be helpful to think about the image of an iceberg. We only see the top of the iceberg because most of it, as you know, is underwater. Similarly, when your child is not behaving, similarly, when your child is behaving in challenging ways, there's feelings that sometimes you just can't see. Your child may also not be aware of these feelings. If we think back to affect labelling, they might not recognise some of these these emotions, being the feeling of being overwhelmed or embarrassed or rejected. So they may need you your help to talk about them. Underneath the behaviour, your child may be feeling tired, stressed, anxious, confused or something else. Whatever's going on, try to remember that the behaviour you see on the surface is not always the whole story. Now for some top tips to help you to manage behaviour at home. Firstly, set boundaries. Have really clear expectations of the behaviour you expect to see. Follow through with consequences. If you say something's going to happen, make sure that it does. Use lots of positive praise. Really hone in on the great things that your children are doing. 
Help your child to label their emotions. Help them to find the words for their feelings. Help them to understand when they're getting overwhelmed and help them to spot the triggers for when this is happening. Most importantly, do your best to remain calm. This can be really challenging, especially if your children experience some very heightened emotions. However, please remember that children will feed off your energy. So if you can do your best to remain calm, then this will ultimately have a calming influence on them. Finally, if there's anything that concerns you, if you have any concerns about your child's behaviour, please talk to your child's class teacher. We are here to support you as best we can. If you do require any further support, we ask that initial contact for any concerns is made to the class teacher. If necessary, this can then be escalated by the class teacher to a member of the senior leadership team. And if further support is required, we will ask our pastoral worker, Mrs Clifford, to make contact with parents. Many thanks to all the parents and carers who have watched this presentation. I hope you found it useful. Please keep your eye out for our next spotlight, which will be available soon.